So, okay. <clears throat> so welcome everybody, glad to see you all here. Um, we are, uh, this is our second installment of our residency fair for this year. Uh, tonight we're going to uh, focus on family medicine residency op uh, opportunities here in the Valley. Um, our, our goal is to really for our third and fourth year students uh, give you a, a kind of a more detailed look at these particular residency programs and what, uh, what uh, they have to offer uh, you in the way of training opportunities uh, for students. Uh, if there are any on who are, or will come on later first or second year, uh, consider this a more kind of general introduction to the world of graduate medical education. We, um, let's see, we have, well, Nina, tell, help me here. We have, is it 13 residency programs in the Valley? Oh, wow. Um, we've Nothing just recently like accredited a couple. So I'm actually gonna yeah. have to get my numbers together and put it in the chat. Yeah, I, 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 I was, I asked that question once and somebody, I think it was 13 was the answer, over 200 residents. So as many residents, I believe, as we have medical students enrolled in the School of Medicine. Uh, so the graduate medical education uh, realm here in the Valley is growing, has grown tremendously. And there are more uh, programs in various stages of development and also now several fellowships. So uh, that's uh, really, uh, really exciting, I think. Uh, not that all of our graduates have to go to residencies here in the Valley, but certainly one of the important uh, reasons to have a medical school and, a, and a, an entire medical education enterprise here in the Valley is to bring very much needed um, health care and healthcare care professionals uh, to the Valley uh, and uh, provide service to a uh, historically, you know, very much underserved uh, region and, and, and community. So with that, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Dr. Uh, Leonel Vela to uh, say a few words. He is the uh, uh, chair of the Department of Family Medicine um, and uh, previously has a long history of uh, public health work in the Valley and was our founding dean for the Regional Academic Health Center um, in 2000 and 2000, right, Leo? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 2002 is when we actually had our first students arrive, but Leo was uh, on, on the job uh, two years or so earlier to get things rolling. Um, and certainly, uh, of course, had a tremendous uh, role to play in the uh, gathering of resources to make uh, our medical school come, come alive. So, uh, Dr. Vela. Dr. Fish, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for that introduction. And uh, I'd like to also extend my greetings to all the students that are joining us here today. Uh, welcome to the School of Medicine Virtual Residency Fair. Uh, as Dr. Fish mentioned, uh, I'm uh, Dr. Leo Vellem. The, uh, so a lot of people here in the School of Medicine wear different hats. I'm the Senior Associate Dean for Educational uh, Resources and also, as you heard, the Chair of the Department of Family Medicine and also currently Interim Chair of, of the Department of Population Health and, and Biostatistics. Um, but um, it gives me great joy to, to bring you greetings and to congratulate you on this occasion as you're contemplating plans um, and preparations uh, for entering the next phase of your medical education journey. Um, specifically, as you're contemplating your options for residency training. And uh, we are delighted that you are interested in our UTRGB training programs, which are a myriad of them, as you have heard, uh, and growing by leaps and bounds really every year, uh, residency training programs, fellowship programs that you hear about. Um, our Department of Family Medicine has three residency programs located in distinct communities and also a fellowship uh, in sports medicine. And we have uh, three fully uh, uh, accredited uh, family residency programs, as I said, located in communities of McAllen, Edinburgh, and, and Westlaco. And our teaching hospitals respectfully are, are include, uh, respectively include uh, McAllen Medical Center, 
Doctors Hospital at Renaissance and Knapp Medical Center. So even though each program has its, its own identity and located in distinct communities, they are, I would just say, guided by, by core values of the School of Medicine, which includes preparing physicians um, with the knowledge and skills to function as independent family medicine physicians. Um, our programs um, value the key role of community as a respected and valuable partner. We prepare family medicine physicians to understand the social, cultural, economic, and environmental factors that, that impact health and disease. So our residency programs prepare residents to provide evidence-based primary care to patients of all ages in South Texas. Uh, it included experiences in obstetrical care, pediatrics, geriatrics. And this training is implemented through an appropriate blend of um, supervised patient care experiences um, and uh, and uh, this includes obstetrical care, pediatrics, as I said, geriatrics. Um, and then it includes a it's sort of a blend uh, uh, of, of um, this work in, in, in community settings also. So residents work directly with attending physicians in, in various specialties, including emergency medicine, critical care, surgery, radiology, and, and several other uh, specialties and subspecialties. Uh, resident staff, a very active inpatient family medicine service, or services, I should say, in their respective programs. And it allows them to develop the skills and, and confidence to care for acutely ill patients of all ages. And uh, uh, our residency programs focus on what we call compre comprehensive family oriented care for an underserved population in South Texas and continuity of care for patients and populations with varying health status and demographics. And you're gonna hear a little more about this as uh, our program directors uh, uh, present to you uh, about the, the, the individual programs, residency programs. But we provide team-based, collaborative, uh, integrated, or interprofessional healthcare and education, uh, including integrated behavioral health. This, uh, our family medicine uh, department is one of the leaders actually around the country in this area of integrated behavioral health. And all this to, to meet the goals of the healthcare system of the future. So I was appointed last year as a chair of the department and have been very impressed by the commitment of our faculty to, to train the next generation of family medicine physicians. You know, you will be entering your training during an era with challenges of really historical proportions. Probably like never before, society is calling on our medical profession and indeed the specialty of family medicine to lead in providing care and hope to many who are desperately seeking healing and comfort. During your training and career as a family physician, you will impact literally thousands of patients and their families. That's a, one of the great things of family medicine. It's not just the patient, but also the care of, of families and community. So our family medicine residencies and fellowship program are focused on training residents and fellows with the skills and knowledge that prepare them to practice their specialty in the highest quality manner. So with that, I wanna thank you for, again, for your interest in the UTRGV family medicine uh, training programs. And I'd like to also applaud the, the GME and student affairs offices, um, uh, Dr. Fish and all those involved for, for their leadership in impl implementing this residency fair. Uh, a very important pre preparation for uh, for your residency starts at the time you enter medical school. And that's why I'm, I'm hoping we have first years joining us in second years, because this is a preparation that it does, it's not only when you're getting ready to apply for residency. So 
With that said, on behalf of Dean Hawker and, and the faculty, I wish you the absolute best of success and fulfillment as you proceed with your medical education this year and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vela. So this evening, we're going to uh, hear uh, little brief presentations from uh, program directors or faculty from our three family medicine residencies. Uh, family medicine is uh, like, like all primary care specialties, uh, but I think even more so uh, is the specialty of ambiguity. Um, you have people come to you with uh, all sorts of concerns. And of course, family medicine encompasses the entire age spectrum, not just adults or kids, but uh, really the whole age spectrum. Um, and I think in a lot of ways, it's very, very challenging uh, in, in ways that uh, you know, surgery and neurosurgery are not. Um, I remember a neurosurgeon once coming in to do a procedure on a baby I was taking care of, and he wanted to prep the baby himself. He shaved the head very carefully. And then he took a purple marker and marked little dots where he was going to cut. And I thought, gee, you know, neurosurgery, you know, sort of, sort of like painting by numbers. Uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty simple, you know, cut here. Uh, you know, the hard work is, you know, identifying, you know, the infant who needed to have the procedure done in the first place. The procedure is obviously technically challenging, but in an entirely different kind of a way. So I think uh, family medicine being on the front lines uh, so, so directly, uh, you're challenged uh, all the time with conditions that uh, are not always well formed, well developed, uh, or well articulated by patients as they describe their symptoms and, and things. So um, very challenging, uh, very demanding field. Um, and uh, we have three great programs in the Valley uh, to help uh, uh, students uh, and residents prepare uh, for uh, a career in family medicine. So I believe we're going to start with uh, DHR. Um, Dr. Lizette Cepeda is here uh, from the uh, DHR residency faculty. Uh, thank you for being here, Dr. Cepeda. DHR family medicine began right around the time the medical school started. So you're about what, four or five years old? You're, you're muted, Dr. Cepeda. This is our sixth year, I believe. Six year, okay. So yeah, yeah almost as long as the medical school, right. Mm -hmm. Very good. So why don't you go ahead? Um, I will kind of wave at you in about 20 or 25 minutes, allow sure. some time for the students. Uh, sure. And then we'll go on to the next program. So Dr. Sure. Cepeda. Thank you. And uh, thank you for having me today. I'm filling in for uh, Dr. Diaz Rios, our program director. She's on a much deserved vacation right now. Uh, we also have a couple of our residents on uh, to help with any questions uh, that, from the resident perspective. Um, we have our chief, uh, Dr. Ashley Serene, and one of our second years, Dr. Ramiro Tovar. So thank you to them for being here. So I'm going to give a brief overview of what our um, program is like. And I have um, an interesting perspective because I actually graduated from the same, this residency program. Um, and then I uh, stayed on as faculty. So um, I am going to be talking about UTRGD DHR Family Medicine uh, Residency Program located uh, in McAllen, Edinburgh area. Uh, the uh, class size we have right now is um, there are eight in the intern class, eight in the second year class, and six in the third year class. Um, and we hope that next year we'll expand to eight again. So uh, this, at this moment we have 22 and by next year we'll have 24 hopefully. Um, I do wanna say that we have 100% board pass rate for all the, the residents that have uh, graduated um, through our uh, program. So just giving you a general feel, um, there's a lot of overlap with different residency programs. So I'll try to hit, um, hit points that may make our program stick out. And I, you'll, as you'll see, um, there's, a, there's no one program is the same. So McAllen um, is different than NAP, it's different than DHR. So uh, for our intern year, um, we uh, will have the interns go through 13 blocks of four weeks. Um, and about four of these blocks, I apologize if you hear my dogs. Uh, about four of these blocks uh, 
uh, made up of inpatient um, and then um, integrated into these uh, blocks, you'll have one half day of clinic every week. And throughout the intern year, you'll, you'll have ob and inpatient uh, with adult medicine, peds and patient ER, general surgery. Also, um, something unique and cool we have about our uh, intern year is that um, the interns are involved in ICC, uh, which is an integrated care curriculum, um, and it's four weeks, and it, it involves uh, getting to know the farm, farm Ds. Uh, the social workers and our behavioral health consultants. Um, and so they get to understand better, more about the biopsychosocial model and how that integrates with patient care. Um, then the second year is made up of two by two, which means two uh, every two weeks, the uh, second and third years are rotating. So two weeks of outpatient um, or ambulatory, and then two weeks of maintenance elective. Uh, some, some residents like this because you're not stuck in the same rotation for four weeks, especially when it's really tiring, like ICU or inpatient. So you always have, um, you're always looking forward to the next two weeks that something's going to change or, or if you uh, really enjoy outpatient, you know that you, and in the next two weeks, you'll get that. Um, it also, uh, it makes it a lot easier when you're planning for vacation. And I know that may not seem as important now, but as you start residency, it's very important. Um, and then... Your second year, you're allotted about half a half day of flex time where you can catch up on work and that's during the ambulatory. Um, and the second year is made up of ambulatory, outpatient, gyne clinic, peds outpatient, ER. Um, and then the third year, we continue on with the two by two. And um, the interesting thing about two year is that the, the, the third year is that the second, uh, sorry, about the third year is that the residents are not only assigned to the DHR Family Medicine Clinic, but we also assign each third year resident to a community clinic for additional continuity patients. So some of our residents go to the Hope Clinic. Uh, some of our residents go to the San Carlos Clinic. We also have residents going out to pediatric community clinics like DLC Pediatrics and Shalom Pediatrics. Uh, so that allows residents to get a feel for our faculty, but also faculty in the community. And you just get to see how different clinics run. And that's in the third year. Um, another uh, thing I want to point out is every Friday, we have set time uh, from 12 to 5 for didactics. So that gives a residents opportunity to grab lunch. And then throughout the didactics, um, it's usually a mix of M&M, case presentations, guest presenters with, um, will invite specialists to come in and speak. Um, and then uh, every fifth Friday, which happens every three or four months, um, it's a wellness uh, half day. So the residents get to plan an activity together. It was a little challenging during COVID since we had to do the social distancing, um, but uh, still important to us to keep the wellness involved. Um, and then two more things I wanted to note off before I let the residents um, answer any questions as well, is that we also have a, a sports medicine curriculum that's longitudinal. Uh, we do have a sports medicine fellowship. Uh, they graduated, I believe, their second class already, so they have a third class now. So the residents get the opportunity to work with these sports medicine attendings and also with the sports medicine fellows. And our residents uh, are assigned football teams uh, to high school football teams in the area um, to be the sports stock um, and attend the Friday football games. So that's something that they they tend to enjoy. Um, yeah, that's really, really it in a nutshell. Um, I wanted to be quick because I didn't want to take anybody else's time. Um, yeah, any questions that any residents have or anything or that the med students have or anything the residents want to add? I don't know. They're, they may be driving. We're available. I might not turn oh, off. Oh, okay, okay. I, I'm sure you guys are safe. Okay. <laughs> so, Dr. Tovar, how are you doing, sir? Doing very well. Thank you, Dr. Class of 2020, first graduating you know, class of our school. Oh, yeah, now you're yeah, a second year resident. I can't believe that. Oh, second yeah, yeah, year yeah. resident. Yeah, time what flies. happened? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm hitting my, I'm going to hit my 30 soon, and I don't know what's happening. I'm like, ah, I stop. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions at all? <laughs> Yeah, and it, it's nice because we have residents from all over, um, and they are that we're and the medical students from homegrown, 
Brownsville, McAllen. I'm from Harlingen. So I left and came back because I wanted to be back in the community. Um, one thing I wanted to add is um, whatever program you choose, wherever you decide, I just want to, um, if you guys are still deciding between family medicine or not, just to know that uh, family medicine offers a lot of opportunities to go into different things. Um, uh, you know, you know a lot about so many different things. We've had residents graduate from our program and go into an ob fellowship. We had uh, one go into an ER, uh, another ER residency. We had one go into a hospital fellowship. We have um, graduate residents serving in, in clinics uh, in Chicago, Nevada. And then we had a, um, we have two of our residents that have got, are going, one completed a sports medicine fellowship and the other one is currently in a sports medicine fellowship. So I uh, wanted to make that known to know that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a foundation in, in our program. does a really good job at training the residents. And then one more thing I wanted to add is that we're in a, we're in a POSE program. So um, what that means is that we work alongside uh, other uh, residency programs. So um, that's something important for the med students to consider when they're thinking about what kind of training they want to have. So there are lots of ways to be a family medicine doctor. Mm -hmm. Yes. I also want to bring up the point that uh, even though we are in a post program, uh, initially, uh, at least I say medical students, I was going in, uh, I, I wondered on the benefit, pros and benefit, uh, like pros and cons of uh, opposed versus unopposed. Uh, I can say at least through my first year experience that having the post program, uh, one of the good things about it or the great things about it is really that we get to collaborate with people whose entire specialty revolves around that area, particularly like uh, OBGYN uh, or in surgery. So they, they have very, like, you know, you have residents who are uh, doing basically resident work uh, who are specializing in this, uh, and you form these great bonds and uh, great relationships where they teach you how to survive basically during their rotation and what they do. Uh, and you start networking already, you know, they're, they're gonna be a future colleague. Uh, so uh, I, I particularly like that, that aspect of the post program. Do you, um... Do you have any um, issues, problems, you know, competing for patients? I mean, uh, DHR is a hugely busy place. I'd be hard to imagine, but, uh, you know, getting into the operating room and doing cases, getting to do deliveries, um, are, are you comp competing with uh, like the OB program or medicine program or surgery program? Or are there not, truly not, enough cases for everybody to have plenty to do? I think it depends on uh, what you're uh, kind of trying to go into. Uh, I can tell you, at least for internal medicine and for surgery, uh, there's really no, um, uh, at least me personally, I didn't run into any issues where I couldn't find enough cases. There were always plenty of cases for us to uh, scrub into. Uh, and we always have a very diverse patient population, uh, particularly because we also follow our own patients from clinic. Uh, once we're an inpatient. Uh, so uh, we have that internal medicine experience with the added beauty of the continuity of care that, you know, some of these patients are people you see in clinic uh, and you get to treat them uh, basically that much better because you know their full story. Um, as far as OBGYN, there might be a bit of competition there. Uh, there's a lot of volume. Uh, COVID did make it a little difficult, uh, but uh, as I understand, uh, you know, pre-COVID, it, it was very easy to get all your numbers. Um, I would still probably recommend if you're planning on doing family medicine, uh, you'll probably be interested in doing a fellowship afterwards on uh, OB if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, but you definitely get to see the numbers and uh, you definitely have a great experience throughout. Very good, thank you. Hi there, I had a question. Uh, my name is Oscar Gonzalez, not Logan. Sorry, that's my <laughs> stepson. I couldn't change it on the thing. Sorry. Um, I had a question, you, you hit on it a little bit, but my, my question was going to be, being an opposed program or unopposed program, how does COVID affect those pro those types of programs? Or, or a possible another, I don't know, um, issue with, with COVID again? Ashley, I'm not sure if you want to take this one or do you want to take this one? Sure, sure. Hi, um, I'm Ashley Serene. I'm a third year uh, in the program. I'm also one of the chief residents. Um, yeah, no, that's a good question. So, I mean, I completely agree with, with uh, what Dr. Tovar was saying. With COVID specifically, I mean, in my experience, I don't think it's necessarily affected like patient volume 
especially in regards to maybe like competing with other residents. Um, if anything, I would say, at least in our clinics, we actually are probably seeing more patients because of the concerns of COVID and like COVID rule outs and things like that. Um, so personally, I don't think it's necessarily affected it, especially in like the uh, opposed sense. I agree with Dr. Serene. From, from my side, I, I haven't had any issues uh, even with COVID seeing our patients. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, it's busy as always. Yeah, and, and that's a great question. I wouldn't really be able to answer that because I graduated after COVID, but I think that's a great question to pose to uh, Dr. Gomez or Dr. Pareja in their experience. I had a second question if no one else has a question. <laughs> um, about the curriculum, I was looking around at different curriculums uh, for family medicine, and I see some programs sort of dive you into, um, let's say, like emergency medicine or ICU right away, and then other programs have that in a second year curriculum. Is there, a, I don't know, a benefit for one versus another, or does it not matter? So our program specifically, we do um, ER in the first year. It tends to be the second half of the first year. So once you've kind of had a little bit more experience um, and then ICU, we only do it for two weeks in the second year. Um, so I feel like I personally like that because I didn't have a lot of ICU experience. So it was nice to kind of get all the first year experience and get more comfortable with wards and things like that. And then to feel like that I could go kind of a high, uh, you know, one step further into ICU and not be like as lost. And then ER, I mean, ER is always a great experience. So we do that for four weeks in first year. And then in second year, we do two weeks. Um, and then you're welcome to always do electives and things like that. And then in, in third year too, we do pe pediatric ER. Um, so we started doing one, sh about two shifts a month. You go in in the afternoons um, and basically you just see any pediatric patient that comes in. So that also helps us get our numbers and our experience and everything. And you also have the experience of taking care of very sick patients right? ICU kinds of patients. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, although Even on the floor, is, there's lots of generally yeah. very sick people on the floor too. Sure, yeah. sure. Especially yeah. now with COVID. But mm -hmm. yeah, but but generally, you know, the you, you have the experience of, of taking care of, you know, extremely ill patients. And in practice, you know, you may not see that many of them. Uh, but when you do encounter one, you've you've got that muscle memory to be able to, you know, take the proper initial steps. So that's really important. You know, residencies have generally become more competitive just because we have more students and, uh, and you know, residency programs haven't grown as fast as the student population. So one of the questions I get uh, from students is, how many programs should I apply to? I'm a, you know, I'm an average student or uh, let's say I'm an average student in my class. I've done well. I haven't had any any uh, you know sanctions or or I haven't failed or had to you know repeat anything, but um, you know I'm interested in family medicine. How many programs should I apply to 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 have a good chance of matching? I hear somebody some students are applying to sixty or seventy or eighty programs. Uh, that seems like a lot. I I'll go off my experience since I I, I graduated okay. two or three years ago. I've it's been a while. Um, uh, sorry. So things changed with COVID because we were doing virtual. So I feel like the expense of, of traveling around the state or around the country based on where you wanted to go um, uh, made a big difference. So when I was applying, I think I applied to 20 and then I got a lot of interviews, but, but I only interviewed at maybe eight or nine because I was trying to pack them together in the same location. That's also how to do with finances. Um, and you get a general idea if you're a good fit and if they like you. Um, I mean, that's not 100%. Um, I'm not sure how many programs uh, they residents or med students apply to this go around because so many of the, inter the interviews were all virtual. Um, I think when you're going into specialties like general surgery, ortho, derm, you apply to probably like the 60 plus because they're so competitive. But for family medicine, I mean, I think I applied to 20. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Serene and Dr. Tovar can discuss their experience. 
I, I agree. Uh, I, I think for me, I applied to somewhere around the vicinity of 20. Uh, from the uh, main reason I went up to 20, I think, was because there was no charge difference between like the anywhere between 10 or 20, something like that. So I was like, well, I might as well. Um, I, I, I did basically, uh, like Dr. Sabella says, uh, I, I agree. You, you kind of get a feel of which programs you're going to. Uh, you kind of vibe with, uh, you have a, a good connection with. Um, it, it depends on you as well, like where, uh, like do you want to go into a really, really competitive program? Uh, assuming you're an average uh, student, then you might want to apply to more uh, if you want to apply to like a very competitive program. Uh, but once again, it's very dependent on your own uh, CV and uh, your own standing. Um, but honestly, when I was picking, uh, that was my limitation. I was like, okay, 20 is where like that's the price change. And then I felt comfortable. Uh, I think there's a, a website within the, I don't know if it's ACGME or if it's with, um, uh, I can't remember exactly. It's someone where it's like careers in medicine. Uh, uh, it's the LBMC uh, student and resident website about apply smart. It has a, yes. a chart that shows you uh, kind of a point of diminishing returns. Exactly. And I, I remember doing that one together and, and I was like, yeah, uh, basically putting the information in. And uh, I think it was a very comforting thing to do for me, uh, knowing that basically I had some sort of numbers backing down my decision of, you know, I don't have to spend thousands of dollars for no reason. I have another question. Does uh, graduating from UTRGV have any pull on our application? <laughs> I got you, homie. Uh, no, uh, no, yeah, definitely. Uh, basically, I, I, I would think so uh, for, for the fact that you know you already know you guys already know the area. Uh, you've been here for um, basically four years. Uh, the we, we like as a program tend to enjoy people who who want to stay in the area. We like training physicians in this area that uh, want to stay in this area that want to uh, help this uh, growing community. You know support itself uh, so it's definitely a, a very you know a, a very nice factor to have in your application you know that like you're here and you have a connection to our program to begin with already but uh, into uh the area in general so yeah and i was gonna, i was gonna add to that that um uh if, if there's a program on here that you like whichever um whichever you may choose um or if you'd like more than one I would encourage you to try to do, if you haven't already, your family medicine rotation there or do a sub-I there. Because if you show up and you work with the faculty and you're a rock star, um, that that has a lot of pull. Because I mean, we have um, more confidence in someone that we know and we've seen their skills as opposed to other people that maybe we only met for a day and we're just going off the, what's on paper. So if there's a program that really stands out to you either with us or elsewhere, I'd encourage you to look into that. If it's now, possible. With, with, the, with the family medicine um, rotation, we, we kind of rank what we want to see and then we do kind of a lottery. Uh, so I did mine uh, at, uh, at um, Westlaco yeah. NAP Center. At NAP Medical and, Center, yes. Yeah, and so I think uh, with the sub I, I'm not sure what's happening this year. Uh, but yeah, we, we don't get a lot of pick. Um, oh, okay. So, or practically anyway, but you know, I, I enjoyed my time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Those are great questions, by the way. Yeah. The, uh, the, the family medicine uh, clinic uh, where your residency offices are housed and the clinic itself, it's uh, just about a block or so east of the main campus of DHR. It's a beautiful building, uh, great clinic space, great uh, you know learning space. If you haven't been there, um, you know go by and just uh, check it out. It's really nice, um, nice place to you know thinking about. You know you're going to be spending you know several years, three years at least uh, at uh, at one of these programs. So it'd be nice to get a, a real lay of the land. A little hard to do now because we're not, uh, well, we're more virtual rather than traveling around to actually do the interviews, but uh, you can go on the websites and see, I, I guess you all have virtual tours on the on your websites and 
give students a chance to see what the what the building is like, what the campus is like? I'm not sure. Um, yes, yeah, I, th I think you do. We so. do, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, so, I, I yeah. had a similar Take. question on that for Dr. Tovar. You were saying about uh, getting vibes from the places uh, you were looking at. You're talking about like websites or interviews? Um, honestly, I thought a little bit of, of both. Uh, I, I would read up on the on most websites tend to have like some sort of mission or some sort of like statement from the residents, like what they want for medicine or why they're there, uh, little things like that. Um, and some, some of them you can tell like very like cookie cut little presentations. Other ones are like, you know, very honest, very like, yeah, you know, like I'm, you can see their connection, you can see what they want, uh, kind of like their aspirations. And I, I really enjoy that. I felt like, um, you know, the program was very honest, very, very candid. Um, I, it also helped that, I, I mean, I did my so by uh, here at DHR. So uh, I, I initially had thoughts of like going to San Antonio. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to San Antonio. I'm gonna do and then I, I did my so by here and I was like, Man, like what am I doing? Like uh, like this is a great program. I, I had a great time working with all the residents. Everybody was very amiable, very uh, very friendly. Uh, it was a great learning environment. So I, I personally really enjoyed it. Uh, I think it doesn't take too long for you to be able to interact with someone in a work environment and basically say, you know what, they're having fun or they, they're enjoying themselves. And that's something that I, I, I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to enjoy myself as I prepared myself to uh, residency. And I say, I, I can tell you, I, I did not make a mistake coming here. Thank you, nice, uh, nice comments, very helpful. Final questions, comments. Dr. Serene, what are you planning to do after this year of your, you said you're a third year resident, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've already kind of started my job hunting. So um, I'm wanting to work in the outpatient setting. Um, I'm originally from San Antonio. So right now I'm just kind of comparing jobs here versus there because um, mm -hmm. I really do like it down here. So just kind of having to make those decisions. Yeah. <laughs> nice decisions to have to make. So very yeah, good. very good. Okay. Well, thank you all very much uh, for being here with us, uh, Dr. Cepeda, Dr. Serene, Dr. Tovar. Uh, very helpful uh, for our students. Um, yeah, I, I think, well, Nina has your contact information. So, you know, any of our students want to follow up with some additional conversation, uh, if you uh, contact uh, Nina uh, Barrientos, I'm, I'm sure she'll be able to connect you uh, to the right, right person. Okay. So, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let, let's go. Contact us anytime. Okay. Thank you, Rare. Let's go ahead and move on to the uh, Family Medicine Residency at Knapp Medical Center. This is the newest of the three, I believe, uh, of our Family Medicine Residencies. And I think we have Dr. Uh, Omar uh, Ahmad here uh, with us and uh, Dr. Carolina Gomez. Welcome, Hello. both Thank of you. you. Thank you for being here. Good evening. Thank you so much. I'll share my screen here so I can show my presentation. Yes, there you go. Okay, very good. So good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Omar Ahmed. I'm a PGY2 family medicine uh, resident at NAP uh, Family Medicine Program in Westlaco. So a little bit about the area. Of course, some of you are quite familiar, but the Rio Grande Valley area encompasses about 1.3 million people. Um, four counties, majority are Hispanic, um, a lot of bilinguals, uh, and there's ecotourism, uh, citrus, grapefruit, sugarcane, cotton, uh, a lot of travel through the Mexico border, and of course, uh, South Padre Island. Um, and our area, our clinic is uh, right here in the Westlaco uh, Mercedes uh, Junction. Uh, the clinic is actually in Mercedes, uh, Texas. And that medical center is right here in Westlaco. Um, Westlaco is a uh, population about 40,000. It's mostly agricultural, rural communities. Their largest employers are Nat Medical Center and the school districts of Westlaco and Mercedes. And of course, our program is a university-based uh, family medicine program. 
Now, NAP Medical Center, this is where we do the majority of our, um, our core rotations, basically uh, inpatient service. We do four months of inpatient, our intern year, three months, our second year, and uh, two months, our third year. We get a great deal of inpatient exposure. Um, this hospital opened in 1962 with 100 beds. Uh, we're, it's 227 bed hospital, level three trauma center. Um, and it, it's a great uh, exposure to inpatient service. Uh, we get a lot of people coming from Mexico. Um, we get people going to Mexico for um, uh, uh, traveling for health purposes. And whether we like it or not, they're getting uh, medications from Mexico as well. So um, we see a lot of pathology in this hospital, a lot of unique cases in this hospital. And this is our clinic, uh, not too far from the hospital, a few miles away. Um, it was built in 2017 or opened in 2017. Um, and uh, 18 exam rooms, about 13,000 square feet. And uh, we offer care from newborn all the way to geriatrics. Uh, here's an aerial view of our, uh, our clinic here. Um, you can actually see uh, the nursing home, which is right behind us. And that nursing home is called the Mid-Valley Nursing and Rehabilitation. It offers skilled nursing and short-term care, long-term care, rehabilitation and support services. And we're very lucky to have this nursing home right behind our clinic. We're able to walk there and uh, see patients, um, uh, work with physical therapists, um, and uh, learn quite, uh, quite a great deal from these patients. Um, this is a picture of that uh, nursing facility and rehabilitation facility. And our clinic is right to the left side here. And you can see Expressway 2 right here in the background. All the way in the far background is NAP Medical Center there. So our program, uh, as you can see, our yearly applicants has substantially increased over the years. Uh, last year, we had over 2,000 applicants. Um, we're happy to say that our board uh, passing rate is 100% uh, for our two graduating classes, uh, 50th percentile ITE, our in-training exam, which is taken every year. And we're the first value-based clinic of UTRGV, and we brought, won some awards for the Primary Care Research Symposium um, in 2019 and 2020. Some of our faculty here, our interim program director, Dr. Uh, Gerardo Munoz, um, and uh, we have a behavioralist on site uh, at our clinic, Dr. Ortega. We're very fortunate to have her there. Um, a lot of times I'll uh, walk up to her office and ask uh, for uh, uh, an appointment to a patient who I feel needs a uh, uh, very close follow-up, especially with COVID-19. Now a lot of patients are going through behavioral issues. Um, it's great to have her in-house um, to help us out with that. Uh, Dr. Hector Munoz is an assistant professor with us, uh, both inpatient, outpatient, and Dr. Uh, Carolina Gomez as well. And uh, she's an associate professor, but recently she um, uh, has a new role of interim uh, associate program director. So I want to congratulate her for that new role. Uh, and Dr. Perez is a sports medicine uh, um, attending. We have, uh, we do our sports medicine rotation with him. We also do um, hands-on training with him. A few weeks ago, we had a splinting and casting workshop. Uh, right in our clinic. Um, it was a great opportunity to learn and get some hands-on experience. Uh, Dr. Manusoff, we've worked with uh, um, in the clinic and inpatient as well. Uh, he does a lot of uh, genetics research. Um, he, he oftentimes invites us to uh, uh, opportunities to volunteer. Recently, we volunteered at a sports physical uh, assignment um, in mission. Um, Dr. Sandoval, he works with several of the residencies uh, programs here as clinical pharmacology professor. Uh, I love his teaching style. He came to the clinic just a few weeks ago, and uh, we had a one-on-one -on -uh, one, uh, um, lecture, and uh, we learned qu quite a bit from his uh, pharmacology lectures. So our mission, uh, of course, is to provide uh, excellent uh, care for our patients, um, and we're really emphasizing uh, the underserved uh, and the border towns, and really that's what family medicine encompasses, that preventative care, uh, giving care to the people who need it the most. Um, so we are, want to develop uh, the physician as a lifelong adult learner and educator, and we train physicians to not only treat patients here in the communities, but of course across Texas and across the nations, and to provide that compassionate care with whether you have uh, abundant resources or limited resources. 
So a little bit uh, about what some of our uh, graduating residents have done. Uh, they've moved on to OB fellowships in uh, Tennessee, uh, hospitalist fellowships in Alabama, um, and uh, family medicine. That's a great thing about family medicine is uh, it really opens up the doors to a lot of different opportunities. You can go into urgent care. Uh, you can go uh, purely outpatient. You can even go inpatient as well. You can do a mix of both. You can do an OB fellowship and um, you can do uh, sports medicine, geriatrics, which is something I'm interested in. So there's quite a bit of opportunity uh, and uh, to focus um, in family medicine. Uh, some of our residents here, the top row here is the most recent graduating class. Uh, here I am down here, I'm a PGY2. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the pictures of the interns yet. Uh, and uh, I don't have a group picture of all of us because COVID restrictions, it was very difficult last year for us to even get together to do pictures. Um, uh, even getting our individual pictures on our website was difficult, uh, but thankfully we're getting uh, some personalized pictures and group pictures taken in a few weeks. Uh, ACGME rotations. So as you can see, we have an intro to family medicine. Uh, I think one of the med medical students was asking about uh, intros and this is a great opportunity to ease into residency, um, shadowing other residents, seeing how what they do day to day. Um, and then from there, you can go into uh, inpatient, ER, um, ICC, which is clinic, integrative care, uh, OB, uh, surgery, and pediatrics inpatient as well. And that's for your intern year. So our curriculum is of course going to meet those six HCGME uh, competency requirements, uh, professionalism, patient care, et cetera. And we really wanna train fully competent and compassionate family medicine residents. And uh, we want to, I want to emphasize that we really want to take care of the underserved, the minority, rural and the geriatric populations. That's very, very important to us. So our block rotations are uh, for, hospital-based experiences. Uh, our family medicine clinic is our home base, and we have the nursing home, as I mentioned. We do home visits of, as well. We do game coverages as well, so that's why we, we uh, have sports medicine on staff. Um, we do night floats um, during wards. Uh, inpatient uh, service is night float, but as a intern, you don't start night float until later on in your uh, intern year just that you can get the feel of inpatient service and kind of get the hang of it. Um, and then of course we had our Friday afternoon didactics and that's where we have uh, lectures, um, uh, you know, on-hand training, et cetera. We do simulation exercises and we have OSCEs as well. And of course uh, we have behavioral science uh, curriculum. We often have weekly sessions. We're gonna have one uh, this coming Friday as well with our behavioral uh, behavioralist, Dr. Ortega. And we also do scholarly activities. So quality improvement projects, health disparity study projects, uh, performance improvement projects, uh, also known as mor morbid morbidity mortality. And these are all uh, ways for us to learn, uh, to grow as residents, to improve our uh, quality of care. And we have uh, journal clubs every, every month. Um, we pick an article, we discuss it as a team. Um, we look at the strengths, we look at the weaknesses and ways, we can, uh, ways it can be improved. Um, so there's a, a lot of dialogue in our, in our uh, didactics. So we collaborate with School of Medicine, of course. Uh, some of you have rotated uh, at our family medicine clinic. I recognize some of you. Um, uh, we basically uh, want to serve the underserved population. We have Colonia Outreach as well. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, that's kind of uh, been difficult, but we're trying to start that back up. Um, because in that area of Westlaco, we have a lot of opportunity to uh, serve those populations. And we, all, of course, the goal of family medicine is to improve and promote health uh, literacy. And that is in, for all patients, uh, from those that are uneducated all the ways to those who are educated. So what sets us apart, you know, similar to the other residencies here, we're close to the border. Um, we have uh, a lot of different pathologies and uh, we see a lot of unique cases. We have great inpatient training. Um, one thing I really enjoy about our particular residency is that we have uh, Epic, Athena, and Cerner. So uh, 
you have to be familiar with EMR. If you want to work in, uh, in medicine, this is one of the things we have to be very proficient in. And as you go through the different clinics on our, our rotations, we go from working inpatient with Epic, then we can, the next day we'll go to Athena and sometimes we'll have to go back to Epic that same following, that same day. So it's a lot of transitioning. It's a, um, it, it is a learning curve, but the great thing is that we always have a senior resident to, to help us along, to help us learn these EMRs, to get familiar with them. Uh, so a lot of the outpatient uh, clinics use Athena. Uh, currently, I'm in the endocrinology rotation that uses Cerner. So it's actually quite a, quite a jump. I've used Cerner in my inpatient pediatric rotation, and they use that for a month there. I used it for a month in my ER in uh, peds inpatient. But just going back to it this past week or two, it's a learning curve. So um, it's nice to be able to familiarize ourselves with all these different EMRs. I think that's something that makes our, uh, our residency um, uh, unique. And you can see our rotations here, uh, that intro month for our interns. Uh, it's a great way to kind of start ease into the rotations. You have the opportunity to rotate a few days on ER, uh, a few days on inpatient, a few days in the clinic to familiarize yourself with the process. And then you can see you go into inpatient. This was actually my schedule last year. Uh, I went into inpatient right after. I felt very comfortable. I had always had seniors there. I always had attendings to reach out to. Um, and then the next month I went into ER, um, always had support uh, from my uh, co-residents and my faculty. Uh, we do inpatient peds at DHR. Um, and then we do OB at uh, Nat Family Medicine. We're, uh, very thankful to be working uh, with Dr. Blanco, who um, we work with him both in the inpatient and outpatient settings. Uh, we do PEDS ER at Edinburgh Regional. Um, that's one of the places that uses Cerner. Um, we do uh, surgery rotations at Nat Medical Center, newborn at Nat, Nat Medical Center, and then of course inpatient. And our ICC rotation is a clinical care uh, curriculum rotation at the Family Medicine Clinic. And then of course, as we move along uh, at second year, we get to do additional rotations such as ICU and cardiology. Our input inpatient rotations uh, reduce. We have three inpatient rotations in our second year as compared to four. And then as we move on to our third year, we only have two inpatient rotations, but then we have additional rotations such as ENT, ophthalmology, sports medicine, derm, right? So ICC, this is that rotation that we do uh, our intern year. And it encompasses quite a few things, mental health and well, well-being, uh, integrated practice, uh, quality improvement, resident education, continuity care. Whenever we have a, a patient that's in that medical center who does not have a PCP or wants to establish care at our clinic, we do a hospital follow-up. So we contact the patient, we make sure that they're gonna come into our clinic uh, at a follow-up appointment. Um, and then we see them in our clinic and we like that continuity of the care and we see them at subsequent follow-ups. So that's really important to us. And that's what family medicine is all about is, is seeing that patient over the long term, right? And we always are open to based uh, to feedback on resident, resident and fa uh, faculty feedback as well in that rotation. So the intro to family medicine is a lot about communication, professionalism, emotional intelligence, intelligence medical knowledge, uh, like I mentioned, outpatient, inpatient, and ER workflow uh, and practice management as well. So uh, intro to fa family medicine really gets you um, familiarized with several aspects of the residency. And um, I think a lot of our uh, interns appreciate this uh, rotation because it eases you into residency. And our faculty is always giving us evaluation, always giving us feedback. Faculty will give us mid-evaluation feedback. Uh, they, they look at your deficiency, uh, things they're good at, things that they can improve on. So our faculty is always able to give that feedback to, uh, to really maximize our success. Uh, we've, reached, uh, we've had $2 million uh, uh, grant given by the NAP Community Care Foundation in the past, and we are doing multiple activities. These are uh, activities of you know, whether it's painting, we go to Top Golf recently, we go to South Padre Island. Unfortunately, with COVID, we didn't do much last year. But but now that things are kind of opening up, we did Top Golf recently. But now with the Delta variant going around, 
things might be you know locking down again so it, it's constantly changing but the important thing is that we had your residents to um to not only do things in the residency but outside the residency as well it's it's that support system and that's really important and you know whether you guys do residency at uh at nap or an, another family medicine program or somewhere else uh throughout the nation it's really important to have that bond with your residents because residency is tough it, it, there's there's no sugar coating it it's tough it's it's long hours sometimes but it's very rewarding and there's a lot to learn so when you have people around you to support you to do things with you it really makes it fun uh, here's a group picture. This is a few years old now, uh, but hopefully we'll get an updated group picture soon. Uh, this was taken at our NAP Family Medicine um, uh, Clinic. And uh, that's basically a, a quick overview of our NAP Family Medicine residency program. I want to thank you for your attention. If you guys have any questions, I have Dr. Gomez here with me. She's one of our faculty. We'll be happy to answer. Dr. Gomez, do you have any comments you'd uh, like to add? Uh, well, Omar did excellent um, summarizing all the things that we do at the residency. Uh, this residency, as you know, doctor has been growing and growing. I'm the first class that graduated here. So, and I know how the residency has been turning to me super good. Um, and I feel like a challenge uh, to continue with that. Um, we try to do our best, even though we're few faculty, that's one of the things that we need the most. And Oscar rotate with us, so he knows how we work. So hopefully he, he will say be, better than us, uh, how was the sensation for him as a medical student to rotate it with, uh, with our residents, which I know they're super um, helpful with the medical students and welcoming to them. So if you have any questions to us, so thank you, Omar, you did awesome. Thank you. I wanted to say a comment as a medical student to the, the first years and second years. I rotated at NAP and it was, it was fantastic. Um, well, my favorite thing about rotating with NAP was I worked with almost every single resident, first year, second year, third year. It was like maybe one or two that I didn't really get to, to meet. But uh, it was really great. You meet all these different personalities and, uh, and you know teaching styles and stuff. So I, I really had a good time. Very good. What is the size of your uh, first year group? Uh, how many will you be looking for uh, starting next July? Uh, we're continuing keeping six, Doc. Even though we six, want to mm -hmm. do more, uh, we are only three faculties right now. So there is, uh, we cannot take more at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Is there any, uh, I noticed uh, uh, you, you all have Friday afternoon didactics and uh, we heard before DHR, they have Friday afternoon didactics. Do you all ever connect and share speakers or, or ex, uh, exercises that you're doing on Friday afternoons? We did in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, Omar. We did in the past. We're starting that uh, at the beginning. We Every Friday we met uh, but then we started once a month and then uh, we separate because um, I don't know, maybe the, the activities were different and that uh, we try to keep it local and thinking that the, the attention is better when you are in a, a working in a small groups. So I think we have a year, I don't know, with the Omar class we did uh, together. So I've been quite alone that we are doing by ourselves. No, we had uh, clinical pharmacology with Dr. Sandoval. We had uh, lectures with DHR and McCallum Medical uh, yeah. as well. So that was together. We, he would give us assignments to all of us that were the same. That's so that true. was nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so good. There's lots of, lots of resources there. Yes. But I feel like uh, even though we're three different uh, residency, we, we are like siblings. So we count each other. So I know Dr. Cepeda, Dr. Pareja. So even the case that we need to uh, support us, we are, you see, she's there. Mm -hmm. So we, we work uh, good alone together. Very good. Any other questions or comments?
Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Gomez. About, yeah. About Oscar. the valleys. How is it? I, mean, I guess I'm asking just in case somebody else is too shy. Uh, how important is Spanish here in the valley in residency? So a lot of uh, patients are Spanish speaking, but a lot are also bilingual. So I would say it, it's very helpful to know, but it's not mandatory to know. Um, you, can, you can get along inpatient service uh, without knowing Spanish, but of course it's a plus. And if you look at the job market, it's the same thing, right? They'll say uh, bilingual preferred, but not mandatory, right? And I think the exposure that they have when uh, years, they will be better, right, Omar? So oh, they, yes, yes, definitely. The, the when Spanish you're speaking for them, it is, is incre incredible sure. better. Yeah, it's, it's never been a reason that we haven't picked someone Spanish at all. We've had some really great residents that just picked up Spanish as they went, and yeah. they did really well. Yeah. It's a sort of a total immersion environment. You'll, you'll, you'll learn one way or another, so. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Gomez, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you for being here and for your, your very nice presentations. So next up, last up for the evening is McAllen Medical Center, Dr. Heidi Pareja. And uh, this program is the oldest residency in the Valley. You guys are what, 30 years? Yes. Hi. So the program has start, started in 1977. Uh huh. Okay. Very good. All right. So um, I guess we can get started. I see a couple of residents signing in, and Dr. Kalumatanda, our program director, will join us shortly. So again, thank you for everybody for being here. Uh, my name is Heidi Pareja, and I am the associate program director. Now, um, just I, I have a little presentation here that I'm going to share. Okay, so, and everybody can see my slide? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, so this is our McAllen Family Medicine Residency Program. And let me just figure out how to advance. There we go. So this is what um, we'll be covering during our uh, short presentation and leaving more time for questions. So as our other programs have already touched on, um, you know, the advantages of living in McAllen, it's, it's, a, it's safe, you know, considering a, an urban area, it's safer than most urban areas. Um, and you have lots of amenities that you can find in other cities. Um, the cost of living is very affordable compared to other big cities. Uh, public schools are great um, and, and you can still live close by to work. So that's always a plus, right? Considering commute time in other big cities. Um, and yes, here it's very hot <laughs> as we can all see right now during the summer. Um, and we do have nice winters though. Um, so I'm just wanting to touch up on the curriculum of our program. Um, this is our first year's curriculum, so they do two months of inpatient care, um, two months of obstetrics and newborn care, and two months of night float. So basically, in total, you're in six months in the hospital in your first year um, with alternating months. And then uh, one month of behavioral health, two months of internal medicine, a month of VA rotation, and one month pediatric care and a month of women's health and gynecology. Um, and, and also in your first year, um, residents are assigned to do nine shifts during the year, um, night shifts. And then in our second year, the, the inpatient is two months and then just one month of night float. So only three months of inpatient care. Um, and then we have our one month of ICU critical care, one month of adult emergency care, and one month of pediatric emergency care, one month pediatric ambulatory care, one month of VA, uh, general surgery, ortho, neuro, cardio are all one month. And in second year, you only get five nights to cover during the year. In our PGY3, 
um, is similar to the inpatient as your second year where you're doing two months of inpatient care and one month of night float. And then you have emergency medicine, pediatric inpatient care, um, practice management, ophthalmology and ENT are combined in a one month rotation sports medicine, dermatology, and then you have three months of electives where the residents get to choose what, what they want to do. And here they are also assigned five uh, night shifts to cover during the year. Now our inpatient, um, we, we, we work at McAllen Medical Center, which is um, the, the only level two trauma care that's American College of Servants surgeons verified in uh, Hidalgo County. Um, and our birthing center also has been uh, delivering babies for over 35 years, and they have a level uh, three NICU service. Um, so, so our hospital is, you know, we have a lot of trauma, we have lots of babies, so that's a little something to distinguish our hospital. Um, the hospital counts with over 400 beds, I think it's 440 beds. Um, so it's a big hospital. We are an unopposed program at the hospital. So we're, we're the only residency there. Um, additional considerations, you know, again, we're unopposed. Uh, as Dr. Fish mentioned, we, we have been here for a long time. Um, so that just builds up on the relationships that we have with the community and with other specialists um and and the graduates that have graduated from the program um work with us now as supervising the residents and such so our um that that just talks about stability in the program uh, we are part of the university so we have to follow guidelines employment policies and of course we have the great benefits right as a residency belonging to the university and this is our, our program roster. Um, so our faculty, we, we, we were short a couple of years ago, but now we have um, Dr. Cano with us. Dr. Yuri Cuella just graduated, so he will be joining us shortly. Dr. Garza Tamez, Valdemar Gonzalez, and Dr. Barón is our behavioral specialist. So um, I believe everybody knows that all of our clinics have a primary care behavioral health model which I think is very, very important um, to get during your residency training. You know, you have that person there that can help you with any of the behavioral mental problems that our, our patients may have. So that's always a plus in your training. Um, and as you can see, our, our diversity of the residents is something that I, I enjoy a lot. We have young, maybe not, not so young <laughs> residents, a little bit younger. Um, you know, ladies, males, and every batch is different. Like my batch, we were um, five ladies and one male. So um, they're all different. Um, our accreditation status, uh, we have improved uh, previous concerns that we had that had led us to warning status. And, and these are some of the, the issues that we were having with scholarly activity and the passing rate on board exam. Uh, but now it's been eight years that we have had 100% of our residents uh, take and pass their boards on their first attempt um, uh, regarding faculty supervision and adequate numbers of outpatient encounters. We have cleared all of that. So we are in good standing now with ACGME. Um, we have full accreditation status and that was notified in February, 2021. So, and we just, want to continue improving anything that we can continue, uh, you know, and, and making it better every year. Um, experience and the experience you will receive here during the three years will make you an outstanding uh, family medicine physician and um, our other programs have already touched on, you know, as a family medicine doctor, you can work in many, many type of practices, um, you know, family medicine with OB privileges, and it can be obstetrical, um, surgical OB or non-surgical. It just depends on if that's something that you're looking for. And, um, but our program, you, you can have the numbers if that's something that you really want. Um, a lot of our 
residents have also gone into hospitalists or you can do um, clinic slash hospital care, uh, freestanding ER or practitioners, uh, our fellowships, uh, our previous residents have done ER fellowship, dermatology fellowship, hospice um, fellowship as well. Uh, regarding the, like our program we have, it's a 666 uh, number that we have right now. So our, um, we hopefully we will plan to, we, we would like to increase to eight residents coming in, but, but for next year we will have six. That, that is what we have for now. Our noon didactics, those are every day from 12.30 to 1.30. So during your lunch is when, when you, you know, you're eating your lunch and you're uh, participating in noon didactics. Um, and on Fridays, we do have Friday afternoons available for nursing home visits for home uh, or home visits or, or any other activities. There's also um, GME conferences that take place on Friday afternoons that our residents and faculty participate in. Um, and I think one of, one of the students asked, you know, regarding COVID, um, something that changed, I think it's, it's the same across all programs, is that we started doing telemedicine. So that's, that's something that was implemented and our residents are doing very well. <clears throat> um, I think that's a bit about it. So it was just a, a, a short presentation. Um, I don't know if Dr. Cal was able to join us. If anybody has. Uh, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. Anything that you would like to add, Dr. Cal? No, it was uh, very complete. I think you represented our program uh, uh, in its entirety. You mentioned all the the most important features. Um, uh, it's a, a personal fit for us. Uh, we uh, prefer uh, to have a brilliant uh, candidate, but the most important thing for us is that uh, um, you work well and gel with our seniors and our, our staff and faculty uh, because uh, that type of type of cohesive unit is the only thing that I've found that is uh, makes for a successful program and uh, it um, um, it uh, empowers you as a resident to try to do better because uh, there's, you know, we become part of your family. Um, so uh, we are, uh, as uh, Dr. Pareja said, we've been here for over 40 years. We were, we are the legacy program. And uh, so far we still, we remain unopposed. Uh, I think that in itself is uh, a challenge depending on how you look at it, um, you know, um, as more and more hospitals discover that they uh, um, want other specialties training in their programs because it offers them a, a nice outlet for uh, potential candidates that they can hire, um, as well as there's a financial part of, of, uh, of sponsoring residencies uh, that uh, is part of their business models nowadays. Uh, we're one of the last bastions that uh, are left, still left, that were uh, unopposed. And uh, being unopposed, you as a resident uh, get to throw yourself into every part of medicine, uh, from the intake to the uh, to the exit, um, whether it be a, a, a stable patient or a critical care patient or a surgical patient or an OB patient or a a newborn that's stable or a newborn that needs to go to the NICU. So uh, it's uh, unique in itself. Uh, I don't know how long that'll remain that way. Um, as I said, uh, DHR has so many residency programs. NAP used to be unopposed and now they have two. So uh, it, um, it, it creates its own benefits, its pros, and it creates its own cons. And uh, so far, I'm, I think I've enjoyed uh, having an unopposed program, uh, being the only unopposed program here so far. Be glad to answer any questions. And I believe you may have some of our residents on board that um, um, would be more uh, candid with uh, their experience. Dr. Fish, how are you? Yes, thank you. Very good, sir. Thank you for being here. Thank you, sir. Yeah, any of the residents like to make some comments? Please. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Aileen Aguilar. I'm one of the residents here from McAllen. I'm actually the chief resident. And to add to what Dr. Carl and Dr. Pareja said, actually this program is great because of, of many things, right? But being on a post program has provided us a great experience. And I think we feel comfortable after being in this program to go to any field. As they say, we can work as hospitalists. If we really want, we don't have any OB, OB uh, guy in residence competing with us. We can do C-sections if we want, we can do deliveries and we have a consultant that supervise us for that. We have a lot of experience in the ER, in the inpatient, in the outpatient setting. So this program is re really complete. And we also have here on the call two co-residents, Dr. Sarina Sillas and Dr. Juan Rodriguez, if they also want to add something. No. Well, we will be happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you. Questions from our students, comments? Well, um, hi, I'm Dr. Kano. I'm also an unit, I'm, an, I'm the one that was attending from the residency program. So I want yes, to tell you all that it's a great program. It's very important that we get to the top and to do, be in any place and you want to work in. So, uh, I believe this program will, you will be confident enough to work in any environment, be hospital, inpatient, outpatient, outpatient procedures. So it is a great hospital, if you're in a pose, you have a lot of experience, all the specialties, all of those very friendly, and uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Thank you. Comments, questions, students? Three very, strong programs alike in some ways, different in some other ways. You have lots of opportunity right here in the Valley in family medicine, for sure. Okay. And again, I think students, if you think of something later and uh, want to reach uh, any of the faculty or residents who have been here with us this evening, uh, I think Nina can help uh, make, uh, connect you. I'm volunteering you, uh, Nina, uh, to uh, make those connections for our students if they'd like to have, have any follow-up conversations or have any other questions. I'm more than happy to, Dr. Fish. So, okay, thank you. All right, well, thank to you. all of our, our faculty, guests, program directors, residents, thank you all for being here with us this evening. Students, I hope uh, you enjoyed this. Uh, thank you, uh, Nina and Melody, for organizing this. Our last of these uh, sessions will be this coming Thursday. Uh, it's 5.30 p.m., same time. Uh, and we'll be covering the uh, internal medicine uh, residency programs uh, here in the Valley. Very well. Okay. Thank you all again for being here. Have a good evening. Thank you, Dr. Fish. Bye-bye, guys. Wish Bye -bye. you all the best. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Fish. Thank you. Thank you all. Hi, Carolina. Long time. Dr. Hi, Cal. Doctor. How are you doing? Good, good. Nice to see you. Everything well over there? Nice to see you too, Doc. Take care. Yes, sir. Getting busy, but yes. I hope you're good. doing as well. Bueno, bueno. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Ciao. Wait a second.